have a user profile page here, which displays some information about a user. And I also have this edit profile link down here, which allows them to edit this information. However, what I would like to do is add some in-place editing to this profile page so that as the user clicks on an attribute, say the name here, it allows them to edit that attribute directly on the same profile page without having to get it go to the edit page. Now there are a variety of Rails plugins which can help out with in-place editing. Uh, here's a comprehensive list at the Ruby Toolbox, which by the way is a great resource if you have a given problem and you want to find some Ruby gems to help solve that problem. Uh, the one I'm going to be covering here is a best in place. I find this to be the most feature complete and comprehensive solution, but the others are definitely worth checking out as well. Now, best in place is actually a fork of the rest in place project, which is another popular solution. And the nice thing about best in place is that it offers a helper method called best in place, which makes it easy for adding uh, in place editing fields in your Rails application. It just takes an object, an attribute, and other options that you can pass in. And also it has a demo application, which you can check out. So you can see in this demo app here that you can edit an attribute by simply clicking on it. So we can change this last name field here, for example, to uh, anything we want. And then when we hit return or unfocus, it's going to submit that to the server and update it in the database. The nice thing about best in place is that it also supports validation. So if we type in an invalid email address here, for example, it says wrong email address format and it reverts back to the old one. There's also support for different types, such as Boolean fields here. Uh, just click it and uh, swap the value, or maybe even an option to uh, choose a different country using a select menu. So now let's see what's involved in adding this to our application. First, we need to go into the gem file of the application and add the best in place gem here, and then run the bundle command to install the gem. And then we need to include some JavaScript files which are provided by the gem. Now, since this is a Rails 3.1 application, I'm going to do this under app assets, JavaScripts, and add it to the manifest in the application JS file here. Just make sure to include it after jQuery here. And so one is called jQuery.per. So this is a jQuery plugin that best in place uses, but it's built right into the gem so you don't have to install it separately. And you also need to include the best in place JavaScript in here as well. Now we still need to tell it to load up best in place. And I'm going to do that inside of the user's CoffeeScript file here. First, I'll make sure that the DOM is loaded. And then I'm going to uh, take everything that has the class of best in place, which is what uh, best in place uses internally, and then call best in place on it, which will add that functionality. All right, so now that we have best in place set up, let's work on adding it to our user profile page here so that when we click on an attribute, it allows us to edit it. So here's what that show template looks like for the user profile page. And currently I'm just outputting the value for each of the user's attributes. But I wanna use best in place here so I can use the best in place helper method, pass the user as the first argument and name as a symbol as the next argument and that will be the attribute it edits. And I'll just do the first couple attributes here, name and email. So now when I reload this page here and I click on an attribute such as the name, I get an edit field where I can change this and let's try editing this and submitting it. And it doesn't look like it worked. It reverted the name back to Batman. But if I reload this page here, you can see that it says successfully updated user and it changes the name to Bruce. So the reason for this odd behavior is that the best in place plugin uses JSON underneath, but our application controller currently doesn't respond to JSON properly. So here's what my user's controller currently looks like. And it's pretty standard here, just with the uh, seven RESTful style actions, which by the way, this plugin does expect a RESTful style controller. And what's happening underneath is that it's triggering this update action here when that change gets submitted and sending it in the user parameter properly. However, we're not responding to JSON uh, like we should. So to solve this, we could add a respond to block here to handle this. Or since we're in Rails 3, we can just use a respond with call and that will handle everything for us with some nice defaults. So we can just call respond with and then pass in the user model here. Now respond with also requires a respond to call at the top of the controller here. So I'll just add a respond to uh, HTML and JSON. Now, if you need to further customize this behavior, you may want to go with a full respond to block inside of your update action. And there's a nice example of this inside of the best in place readme here, as you can see. So now that our controller responds to JSON, the in place edit functionality now works. So we can now change this to Batman and now it submits successfully and everything works like we expect.
Now, validations also work as well. I have a format validation on this email address, so if I enter an invalid email, then I get an error message saying here saying that it's invalid and the value reverts to its default. However, you probably want to uh, pretty up this error message with some styling. I'm just going to add some quick styling here for this under the user's SCSS file here. I'll just paste in some code and notice that all this is inside of a per class, which is uh, what Best in Place uses. So now when I reload the page here and provide an invalid email address, it's going to display the error message in a nice pretty styling up here. So now what about the other attributes here for the user profile? Currently, they can only edit the name and the email, but I would like them all to be supported. So what I could do is just uh, copy and paste. Let's start with the user bio here. Now the uh, bio is actually a long piece of text and currently it's just going to show a simple small input field. So instead we can change the type to a uh, text area and that way it will be a larger text area. So now when I reload the page here and click on the bio area, I get a full text area to edit this and I can just uh, change anything I want. And when I unfocus, it makes that change on the server side. And as for these other attributes here, the uh, public profile is just a simple Boolean field. So we can say um, the public profile is actually a type checkbox and then provide a collection option into here. And then let's say uh, no and yes. And that will be the values that will be displayed for the uh, off and on position of the checkbox. And as for the gender attribute up here, it's pretty similar. We can just supply uh, the name here is gender. And then the type, let's make it a select menu. And the collection option here actually needs to be a two-dimensional array of values and names. So I'm just going to paste in this and notice we have three options here, male, female, and unspecified. Now reloading here to change the gender, we can click to uh, select a different gender here. And we can also click just to change the public profile to yes or no because it's a simple Boolean field. So that's pretty much it for this episode. We now have a fully working in-place editing option for this profile page here. Now there may be times when you want to do something a little bit more complicated than this for in-place editing, such as maybe there's an association that you want to display a select menu for, or maybe a formatted price or something where the value you display is different than the one you show in the edit field. Unfortunately, that is a little difficult to do at the moment through this plugin. For those situations, I think it's best to fall back to a normal editing form or do something from scratch, which is a bit out of the scope of this episode. But all in all, the best in place gem is a really nice solution for in place editing. Recommend you give it a try. Thanks for watching. In the pro episode this week, I will continue off last week's pro episode on making a gem. Here I will show you how to release versions of the gem, set up Travis CI to run the tests, add some better documentation with our doc, and even show you some sites to advertise the gem on. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.